Hey, Hello. Vincent. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice. Me too. Um, just real quick, I just realized I'm missing a part of my one hour overview. That I want to add real quick, and then once I finish that, I'll good to get started. That's fine. Uh oh, did I freeze? I'm so sorry. Yeah, For some reason on this laptop, good. sometimes yeah, my Wi Fi is yeah. on and off. Yeah, no worries. Well, if it happens, um, like if I notice it happening during your speech, then I will switch to my phone. So that way you at least hear all of my speech. All right, let me just drop some paper, then I'm good to go. Okay. Okay, I'm sending out the 2AC right now. Awesome. And this is the first time I'm debating this app. So if anything's a little bit funky, my bad. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's uh, the point. <laughs> um, and just to verify, are you reading the version that we went over the couple a couple days ago? Or did you um, make any more updates? I'll be honest, all these like days are kind of blending together so I'm not sure but just to be safe I'll just send it to you right now I guess okay so. just so that way if I like make any yeah. warrants from your 1AC you're not like I don't think this is the applicable version Abby <laughs> um I'll just send you both
Okay, the one AC should be sent, and now the two AC. Two AC is also sent. So just let me know when you get those. Yep, I got the one AC. Reloading. My internet's probably a little slow, so I'm just waiting for the second. There we go. Okay, real fast, Vincent, mm -hmm. just in terms of strategy. Um, it's something that everyone has been doing at camp so far. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna look at the doc that much, but resend me the doc with only the pieces of evidence you're reading. Okay. So it holds the other team. It's like strategy wise, but basically if the other team isn't listening and flowing and they yeah. miss an argument, like that's on them. I think we used to do that a lot, but then I think during like online debate last year with like, there was like a lot of judges that said they prefer us to send analytics because like sometimes Wi-Fi glitches and they like might miss something, but. Yeah, yeah, I guess I can understand, but I think this year some things will be a little more in person. Mm -hmm. um, if I have a question though, I'll ask you in cross sex and mm -hmm. it's like, okay, can you send me that warrant? Great, but even then, I don't know. I've been judging a lot of debates where I'm like, you can hear fine. Cool. Um, and then there's like this small little line in the middle that is a re-highlighting of the 1AC. So just to let you know, because it looks a bit weird in like, the, I guess the formatting of it. That's totally fine. Oh man, my verbatim is going crazy, but okay. The cards only to AC is sent. Okay. And then just let me know when you're ready. Yep, I'm good whenever you're good. Perfect. <clears throat> Order is Case Framework Academy K. Ultra life is the best method. Current discussions about water resources assert water is a colonial technology that is increasingly privatized and individualized. For example, water is crucial for all life on Earth. Yet when events such as Line 3 or the Flint water crisis happens, we turn a blind eye, continue to mindlessly drink our water while thinking my water is safe. It'll never happen to me. Similarly, debate in American politics are structured by continual desire for thirst and uh, for, for indigenous thirst. Ultra life offers a way to simultaneously divest from colonial conceptions of water, but also offer a theory in practice towards mutual understanding and decolonization. Their conception of the off theory of thirst makes it impossible for the neck to win and is a prior question to the academy k because the force thirst of black and native folks justified by the ideal of white property humanism ensures an endless cycle of colonialism that enshrines waters forever divorced from nature subsuming any possibility of decolonial practices and saving earth from individualization at the silva and mochi day team this uh, colonial control of water there's not just a physical process also a social one through academia and debate i.e. how black and native scholarship and debates pathologies is not fair but not black in the moral high ground or argumentatively unrefined restricts academic judges and debaters complicit to how debates only tolerate minority scholarship when it fits colonial standards very similar to how chinese railroad workers only had their quite a thirst quench when they serve the purpose of westward expansion for the states and ballots are the most effective way to change the state of the big community. Refusing to acknowledge problems in debates is the main way oppression is perpetuated. Silence destroys education, preserves the status quo. Let's read weekly 08. 
Bats have been judged national policies of our communities and workers cannot change the state, but they can change the state of the debate. Racism among the leaders from the U.S. of the other debate community of the U.S. of the U.S. of the debate community replicates these values like playing in the fancy world that we cannot change only the debate community accountable for this failure. They're going to control this method, that methodological choice in the debate, forcing other teams and judges to consider whether normative ways of engaging competition results in any environmental hostile. Those marked by differences onto the line by line. They say we're semi capitalism, but only the affirmative sort of ways to combat semi capitalism. What a third one I see uh, Murphy evidence says that to dismantle the work of whiteness in, this, in, in the institutions we inhabit, enriched by capitalism systems, proves that not only are we the opposite of what Cup 14 describes that we are actively battling capitalistic systems. If they can't win that, they can't prove that we are in cruel optimism, especially when we have used specific historical analysis in the context of the one AC that answers the Wick Wilkin five evidence as well, because we have proved that we are the exact opposite of capitalism and onto the framework debate. First, we meet the AF is water resource protection. The next is the counter interpretation. The AF can call into question the implications of water resource protection in the U.S. and its effect on marginalized communities. There's three reasons to fur. Number one is the respectability politics. It's that number one, uh, American politics and conceptions of water resources have operated through the process of not only controlling indigenous ways of life, but by mandating labor for survival. Framework fours, in order to be seen as respectable and productive political subject, one must assimilate to Western culture and politics. Not only does this recreate the violent mantra of kill the Indian, save the man, but it also mirrors the way Chinese railroad workers had to labor on the colonialist project to manifest destiny in order to be seen as respectable and deserving of just enough water to survive only the counter interpretation solves by allowing different cultural and social understandings of water that doesn't see these state-based solutions and solutions to col uh, and understandings to colonialism. And number two is the minority participation just that speaking in spaces like debate can change structural oppression. Nebulous claims to ground and limits and education and maintain structural and, 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 and equities and justifies push out of minorities. That's crap 14. And increasing diverse aggressive participation transform debate incorporating performance radical politics rather than addressing the resolution of Ruffin and Johnson and tactic premises. Their arguments are that framework of debate historically privileged white straight students. There's recognition that academics say the arguments have taken place privileged certain types over others, other uh, teams of traditional policy of semantic cultural goals, uh, goals of debate are not being met, even being undermined. Hardy wants allies to create a policy only to face mostly white, white team from elite universities. The increased minority participation team and white right different arguments is all true about debate about how the ability to hide the subjectivity experience that shape seemingly objective and rational roles of the powers of ordination, making the viewpoint of the dominant groups is only true reality is how much easier for some programs to be successful. And next is the ultra life to sad status quo to sad conceptions of water resources are already and incredibly individualized and privatized increased water production only makes it even more individualistic than they are now. There's not only furthers the disconnection people have with water, but also makes people complicit in a colonial environmental degradation and undoes the work of ultra life. People are not going to be in cannot begin to understand and change colonial privatization of water without being able to theorize water as something that connects us all together. Without this, we lead ourselves onto a doomed path, too busy tunnel visioning into our most immediate dangers to see worldviews that affect us all, i.e. the Line 3 char sand pipelines that are being built right now that can threaten North America, that can threaten North Americans, North America's fresh water supply chain by crossing two, three, through 200 bodies of water. Only the counter interpretation solves by allowing a theory of ultra life that's not only incompatible with colonial conceptions of Increased water also unbinds the individualistic chains that prevent us from seeing water from a worldview and onto the line by line. They say limits, but number one, cross apply limits. Limits are just ways of reproducing respectability politics, saying that one must limit the top to be, to be governmental. Increase of water resources is just in order to be seen as respectable, only reproduces violent mantras of anti indigenous, Asian, and black descent. And number two, it's that ultra life turns limits. We critique their understanding of what cannot be considered topical because it was built on settler forces. The same people who corrupted the system by forcing indigenous people to be incarcerated many centuries ago. This means that their static interpretations are inherently violent and built upon indigenous suffering. They say grab, but no, we give the that ground counter performances indicts of fugitivity are sorry indicts of ultra light defense of the status quo cameras based off competitive methods case of futurity pessimism etc are shifted argument choices understand the educational significance of it you should be willing to risk a small loss in ground in favor of more educational ground and number two is that concessionary ground is inevitable i can't read a court da against an app that uses congress which means that as long as we prove that the ground we provide is valuable you should default app and they didn't even give a ground list at the point where the neck is not even provided a ground list we control the internal link to limits and clash because we're the only things that are given stable <laughs> Net ground against the app, and they say education and portable skills. Well, this app impact isn't unique to them. You can't grant it to them because we still allow for all the education and portable skills that they provide. Since they don't, since we don't bar off quote unquote topical debates, we just allow for the apps to use different scholarships to call into question water resource production in the, in the U.S. Even if we win, that their impact is good. But since we solve for the same impact, you're going to vote on our counter, counter interpretation with the educational significance of the incorporation of different minority scholarships calling into question water resources protections as a net benefit and onto the academy cave. First is the obligation to set. Settlers have an unending infinite obligation to center indigenous people's scholarship in the native demands for colonization within an academic setting. Settlers can either take up this role or include a colonialism and worsen the already existing violence on indigenous people. That's Carlson. That's Carlson, Carlson 16. Settler scholars, scholars, huge after oil, indigenous war on academic scholarship, but traditions of activism, indigenous scholarship is dependent on the suffering indigenous peoples under the colonial occupation of reciprocity, rather as a Jewish by academy, which requires concessions to cleanse the concise conscious decision to become decolonizing force by dismantling settler colonialism. And next is the white, whitewashing dissad. 
in a world where we can't talk about these kind of issues, what would the academy even be used for? We can use, we, we would go into a color neutral form of debate slash practice where we can justify increased surveillance on indigenous water sites as a method of increased production of water resources. You might watch the academy, but by forcing us to not have these conversations so that we are ignorant to these issues, our app forces us to confront something like settler guilt. Without this confrontation, people won't be able to know what to even be guilty about in the first place. There's two impacts to this. Number one is the continuation of colonial paradigms and ways of thought. Number two is the types of these types of proto proto protocols spill over and affect how indigenous people are socialized as a result without acknowledging the importance of indigenous voices, scapegoating, other authorization, and, and disempowerment are all inevitable and prone to both. We aren't in reinvestment in the economy, which means that there's no reason why we can't do the undercommons and ultra life and they, why they can't coexist. Consider endorsing the app as a question of whether we should include this strategy as a beneficial tool for toolkit and anti racist politics which obviously isn't the only solution to seek justice, but we also have come to the debate and propose this advocacy as a possible new strategy that people can use in order to seek anti, uh, anti-colonialist goals. If we win this as a strategy, it proves the efficiency of debate space as a deliver- on deliberating strategies and coming to effective solutions on what are good ways to approach certain issues, which impact turns all the academy bad offense onto the K. And yeah, that is also justification for why we can do perm do and uh, perm do the AF and all non- and, and non-competing parts of the alternative. And then uh, as an answer to their Ferguson 12 link, no link, we are not protesting the academy. The only thing that we even do related to the academy is reading this AF and debate. But if that's what links they have double turned themselves by reading by also reading these arguments in debate. They are painting a picture of us to desperately get a link and onto the alt debate. Under Collins can't uh, can't solve cases. The one AC isn't a K about the academy. We focus on how people in the U.S. view water resources as colonial mindsets, and we try to focus through this through the through through a mindset of uh, uh, we try to change this through a mindset of ultra life that allows for us to kind of view water as a as as a group project into the all fails no analysis as to how the undercommon doesn't get co opted or, or even coexist with current spaces. Means that you should be highly skeptical of of, of the of, of, of sorry of the K and any of its broad claims. And then I'm ready for pause. Sorry, Vincent, did you say that was time? Yeah, I'm ready for pause. Okay. Let me set my timer. Okay, first on the K, can you explain this double turn for me of how the negative is also an attempt to tie like narratives of subject location into the debate space? Yeah, sure. Um, My word is very broken right now, but um, the argument pretty much is that the only thing we really do that kind of is a quote unquote reinvestment in the academy is literally just reading this AF in debate. And if that's what really links us, then there's no reason why you also don't link to yourself because you guys are, are also reading this um like arguments within debate and like using like literature what arguments specifically like using literature and giving critiques or tying it to narratives of subject location and using examples such as you all do with like indigenous and asian communities right so the argument is that if we are a reinvestment in the academy by reading like these forms of literature within debate there's no reason why you all don't do the exact same thing by reading your forms of literature within debate Okay, cool. Um, I guess I want to go to your argument on case when you said that you all aren't cruel optimism. Can you explain that a little bit more for me? Yeah, so basically, we're saying that if you all can't prove that we are like a form of semi capitalism, there's also no reason why we can be cruel optimism either, especially when we how do you right? So how are you all not like semi cap, or not necessarily saying the AF itself is semi cap, but rather semi cap, like, co-ops and like takes away the narrative from the ass right so we think we're the exact opposite of like semi-capitalism capitalistic co-op or uh, co-op because um as like i kind of said like our third one ac murphy evidence talks about how the ultra life kind of serves as a way to dismantle the work of whiteness and like kind of the work of how capitalism and like so i guess and what do you all do outside of a conversation what does the f do that actively dismantles whiteness Right, so we think there's many things that we do. First is like an like an important analysis of kind of our own histories and its relationship to colonialism. And we argue that only by kind of having this analysis and this connection through history can we kind of like kind of tie together all like these kind of different minority viewpoints, like towards I guess like towards water resources, toward the state, in order for us to actually kind of acknowledge the problems that are going on in the school, including like, let's say the line three pipelines, right, the Dakota access pipelines to actually be able to kind of focus on like advocacy. Yeah, so I guess my question is, what about this logic or conversation that you're having is uniquely different than the ways that we've empirically always continued to evolve and develop conversations? Yeah, sure. So like, 
Mm -hmm. defending, you know, such as like endangered species. So that way indigenous populations have hunting. Yeah, How does so that conversation I, of decolonization change the way that colonization still operates? Sorry about that, but um, we would make the argument that um, at least in the status quo and like how it's always been in the past, like it's always been like a sort of like, um, I'll continue the, the thing, but like yeah. it's always been kind of like different minority groups all being kind of affected by the way the state treats water resources. But it's always like these different minority communities are individual in their own fights against the state. We argue that there's many different parallels between all like, I guess, like all like different minority groups, including like Asian people, Black people, Indigenous people, that we can like tie parallels together. We're not saying they're the same thing, but we think there's definitely parallels in colonialism that we can use to like analytically like solve many of these problems. Okay, thanks. I'm going to like run my prep for a moment. Yeah, sure. So I stopped at 2.30. Sorry, it took me a second to like quick unmute myself. No um, worries. So I am gonna go from framework to the K and then case. Okay. Framework, K, case. Yeah. Are there any cards? Yep, I'm gonna send them to you. Okay, cool. And everything again is from the same like K core doc. If I ever okay. read a card, sure. Okay. Um, which granted, who knows if I'll actually get to cards. So, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that is my dog no for reasons why I don't know. Happens. Shit. I'm horrible with like Google Docs, like making it easy to share. So I'm sorry, bear no with worries, me. No worries. Okay, I definitely titled it one and C cards. That's clearly not what I meant but like you know what I mean <laughs> and I think yeah okay 
I'll let you know when I have it. Okay. I got it. Let me download it. Okay. Um, just to clarify the two cards, which flow specifically are the two cards on? Um, the, um, let me make sure I put it in the, okay. So I totally, I'm sorry. I totally like pasted them in the wrong order. Um, okay. the Berlant card, the first one is the Academy K. Okay. So then the Newman 10 card, um, yeah, that's for framework. Okay, cool. Let me know if you want me to send you overviews or anything else. Okay. Um, I think it'll be fun trying to flow just based off what I hear. So I'm fine. Okay. If you need it though, you got it. We'll see after the speech. <laughs> okay, because it's my internet that's the problem. So I have as much written down as possible. But yeah. Do you want me to stop you if like you suddenly freeze or something? Yeah, the problem is is you might freeze too. So like sure. interject if it happens um i'll just let you know what the last thing i heard was then i like yeah i had you okay cool yep stop it at whatever time you're at in the last word so that works okay cool okay cool so first on framework the framing for this debate should be which team provides the best best format for policy education our interpretation is that the app must defend the implementation of a usfg policy that results in increased protection of water policy this is our webster 1998 resolve definition and the erickson three evidence the violation is the app has an abstract discussion of water in the context of colonialism but does not tie their app to any usfg political action they say that they meet because they're a conversation about water protection but this still doesn't answer our argument about how they need to be tied to some type of policy implementation either that severance that they're attempting to add a policy implementation or it's never in the 1AC in the first place. So this is bad because it violates or this is bad for standards. The first standard is limits. The app sets a precedent where teams begin to race to the margins, limits, re, race to the margins of the limits, reading any app that is applicable to water. This is bad for two reasons. First is the co-option just said. You can cross apply our Ferguson evidence from the K debate here. Teams and debate consume narratives of, oppressed, of, of, of the oppressed other as a tool to win rounds rather than to center those populations. This creates voyeurs in pornography where suffering becomes another need liberal commodity that can be traded in for a ballot and two it ruins critical education not having a stable limit that ties teams to policy to policy closes the conversation for opportunities to talk about the intricate ways that usfg policy supplements the structure that the app is talking about and shapes contingent forms of violence we we become so focused on the forest that we end up missing the trees they that they end up missing the trees. The other impact is, or the other standard is grounds. The app shapes, the app shifts the debate to the playing field of the affirmative team so that way the negative has fewer resources and are focused on either reading T and framework or generic cap K. No longer are debates about CPs, dissets, or any forms of USFG action and or USFG action that are able to link to the affirmative. Most importantly, this exposed limits and loss of grounds is bad for critical education that is necessary for the app to ever gain their solvency. The competition of the debate space mutes the ability for the affirmative to create to create any type of decolonization decolonization education. The negative is focused on the position of refutation, which requires us to find a way to prove the app wrong. We we become consumed in the need to in the need to adjust to the affirmative's ontopical plan that we no longer are able to focus on class in the ways that structural is and shape policy, meaning that we lose education that we could use as portable skills to the real world. This is why their counterinterpretation continues to fail because it's still a moving stasis point, stasis point in, in the competitive sphere of debate. It means that we're never able to gain real world education because we become so focused on the ways of constantly engaging with the affirmative that we always focus on reading to your framework. That was the argument about grounds. They say that are um they say that this is they make an, an indict as to why our interpretation is bad but you can apply our counter interpretation or our topical version of the app here our topical version of the app would be the united states federal government should give turtle island back to the um back to the indigenous population that means that it's still tied to a policy revel, a policy plan but it doesn't force the affirmative to engage in respectability politics they still have a critical conversation into the ways that settler colonialism operates in the in the united states but it still calls for a usfg plan implementation, which allows for the negative to have access to grounds where we could argue things such as the economy DEA or international relations or how this would offset other structures. So then we could have intricate conversations that are valuable for critical education as to how USFG policy can always lead to some type of circumvention or some type of negative impact. But because we're only focused on the affirmative conversation about water as a fluid, as a fluid theory, we never get to those conversations as to how policy actually operates within the status quo. They say that we justify violence against the minority, but you can cross by the 
Everybody now says of the TVA here, which solves off their offense. They say this, there's an ultra life or an ultra life just said, but one, again, the TVA solves all of their offense because you still start from the critical positionality of the affirmative, but again, it allows access for the negative. So we're focused on the more intricate ways of the intricate conversations rather than forcing the negative to always go for frame to always go for framework. They say that this increases settler colonialism, but again, the TVA solves all of their offense. They need to they need to prove how the TVA of something that is based on radical indigeneity and radical black subjectivity does not solve or like doesn't solve any of their offense um that answers the limits the like argument against limits it answers their argument about how that we still have grounds. They say we could read arguments such as like pessimism, but talking about Afro pessimism is again, focusing on the trees and still focusing on the whole overall forest and still missing the trees. We then are talking about globalizing structures rather than again, having in-depth conversations as to how policies actually operate. I'm gonna make a uniqueness to set here. The context of water policy is something that is negatively harming not only black and indigenous, black and brown communities, but people around the world. It's important for us to understand the ways that policy continues to, continues to not allow Communities to have access to water, yet the affirmative doesn't allow us to have that conversation because even if we engage in the anti-Blackness debate, we're then focused on which structure explains the ways that oppression happens first, rather than how does oppression actually operate in the status quo? We never create those portable skills to create material change. Now we can go on to the Academy K. Um, I'm going to skip that piece of evidence. If I have time, I'll go back to it. But on the K, the F calls for revolutionary displacement through the narrative of the 1A scene. It becomes another story that is consumed by the neoliberal structure of the academy. As systems of revolution adjust, so do structures. Now narratives of suffering and newer form of logic become future commodities in which when, when injected to the academy, they can only be reproduced for profit, not only co-opting the chance to create change by becoming legible, but also allowing structures an opportunity to sabotage these movements. Rather than investing in a false voice, the F provides, rather than invest, investing, the F provides a false voice. We call a rejection of the 1A scene a return to the undercommons. Moan and Hardy describe this as walking, talking, experiencing, and communicating with those around you, having cookouts, parties, groups that are articulated as normal within the status quo, but allowed to be a production of unchecked radical thought rather than inserting that radical thought into the academy space that then gets turned into papers and other, turned into papers, movies, dialogues that just get a check off of the suffering of those populations existing both within and without the, and within and outside the academy is the only way for us to refuse this false, the, to refuse the false question that the affirmative asserted the idea that you have to either reject or engage with the academy no we are calling for a stealing of radical knowledge from the space without giving yourself without giving yourself as a placeholder in return now they say that's linked into an obligation to say, but you can cross apply the analysis here that it's not that we shouldn't ever have conversations about how identity operates, but rather the ways that this will co opt the entirety of the movement. That also answered the whitewashing just said that said that it's necessary for us to have com these conversations in the academy, but that's the false choice. The academy wants us to believe that it's either a refusal or an action to engage. But no, what Moan and Hardy are calling for is a radical resistance rather than not having these conversations, having these conversations in places where it's safe for us. So you can also cross apply our counter disag here of the sabotage to these movements. Our argument is that when we make ourselves legible to the neoliberal co-op, to the neoliberal state, that the commodification that happens to um, our movements only makes it so that way there's infiltration possible. So i.e. they know what we're doing so they can come and get us. That's exactly the project of Cone Cell Pro where we attempted to have radical forms of thought. We introduced that into the into the academic space. Then the, the United States federal government made Cone Cell Pro, which actively killed the leaders of the very movements in the first place. That becomes the disad to the affirmative. Now the links here are the now the links are reasons why the permutations you can group for both permutations don't operate. One, it's still an injection of subject location, but two, the first link is the subjectivity link. Their continuous injection of identity and debate turns the app. They focus on a sense of obligation through their performance as co-opted by the illusions of the debate and can th that debate can meaningfully make change in the world. This is the cruel optimist argument. I'm gonna I'm gonna move on from the Berlant card, but also the second impact or the second link is a minoritarian protest link. This was the Ferguson evidence that said they again attempt to tie their near their app to a position of of subject location and narrative and radical thought that's not the same of, as the alternative, but rather it's why the permutation can't solve because they are still functioning in the idea of radically changing the academy rather than moving away from the academy. All right, um, let me set my timer and then I should be good to go. <clears throat> um, first, just like real quick as a clarifying, what was under cool optimism on Academy K? 
Yeah, under cruel optimism, I went to the minoritarian link, which was the Ferguson evidence. And I just said, that's why, um, like, that's the distinction between the AF and the NAG, where we're not tied to a narrative of attempting to change the academy, but rather a refusal of the academy. Okay. Or an, a refusal of the false choice of engaging. Yeah. And then just to clarify, the other links you had were the, was the identity link, right? And then... Yeah, so that was the, I read the tag for the Berlant, which is the identity link. So it's just the identity in the minority link, but then our impacts were like sabotage, um, co-option, and then the overview kind of frames how the attempt to inject your identity into the space is problematic. So it gave more of the warrant for okay. yeah, like that's the, fine. those links. That's fine. Um, You talk about how it's not just like kind of a binary between refusal and acceptance. I guess then what is it specifically that you're critiquing about the academy and like how what do we do to guys perpetuate that so the affirmative is in this idea of like a false choice where either you're with or you're against the academy so if we're in these debate spaces we then have to radically like resist those spaces every moment that we're in them which is another false position or paradox that it puts us in where we then make ourselves knowledgeable or make ourselves legible to the state so you say this is my act of resistance this is what i'm doing now the state knows what you're doing is able to take that information and create forms or adjust itself to further perpetuate violence onto those populations. So Moulton calls for, yeah, gain knowledge from the academy. Yeah, you know, we have to exist within this world as it is. But rather than reproducing that knowledge or selling your own subjectivity, take that knowledge back to private locations, specifically like when we're out for walks yeah, with sure. friends, that's barbecues. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, let's go to the TVA. You say the USFG should give Turtle Island back. How does that incorporate alter life? Yeah, so that still allows for us to have the radical framing of ways, again, conversations about water, conversations about how like decolonization is necessary. You can say that the ways that we get to giving the land back is through the practice of alter life, but rather the political demand that it's tied to at the end is that the USFG does some type of policy action, which allows the negative inroads to conversations about like international relations or states dissatisfied. And then you can explain how settler colonialism is a globalizing structure and the intricate ways that all of these policies work to uphold it, which gives more in-depth and specific conversation, but also allows both sides to access debate. It's kind of like our framework Her, interpretation yeah, already okay. was the middle of the act. Yeah. Like, and then why are you not respectability why are you not respectability politics? Because we're not critiquing the idea of having a conversation, but rather we're critiquing the education production that's possible. Okay. Um is it four minutes to prep? Yeah, I hate okay. it. But... Yeah, oh well, uh, time's starting.
Top time, that's 109 left. Okay. Order is Case Framework Academy K. I didn't put my time in the chat, so I'll just wrap my 2.30 in there, even yeah, though. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> That's just a habit from an entire year of online debate. Online, got yeah. it. <clears throat> um, do I have cards? I don't think I do. Yeah, no cards. So okay, just... whenever you're good, then I'm good. Cool, so it's just case framework K. The net makes a huge mistake in dropping the thirst impact, which means we win current discussion about water resource, pro water resource protection ignores number one, how federal eco research requires certain populations to be damaged, deeming them as less valuable or less human than the ideal white subject. And number two, various entanglements and interconnections between people, community structures, and environment that recognizes that violence on water is violence on indigenous tribes that are spiritually and materially dependent on it. Number three, this also crosses the line onto framework because they use framework as a way to continue thirst when already minority groups, similar to how Chinese railroad workers are only able to have their thirst quenched when they serve the purpose of manifest destiny. Framework mirrors this by allowing forms of minority scholarship when it serves the purpose of painting the state in a good light. This is horrible for multiple reasons, including violence, simulation, and cultural erasure, affirming a firm afterlife as a way to view this entanglement for, uh, through a unifying lens of water that speaks to various experiences of violence, which are prerequisite to majority colonization and strategizing and organizing. And cases literally conceded coming out of the 2NC, which means that all the offense above is going to win us the debate, especially the craft evidence, or no, 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 no sorry, the, um, the, the, the ballot evidence which talks about how uh, specifically giving us the ballot helps uh, uh, helps change uh, the things within debate, which can be cross line onto framework as its own separate disadded move onto framework. Concede that we mean it was mainly just there for trolls, but we're going for the counter interpretation. You're going to extend it that ask calling into question the implication of water resource production in the U.S. and its effect on marginalized communities. I'm going for the ultra life disad as a reason to prefer the status quo conceptions of water are already incredibly individualized and privatized. Increased water production only makes it exponentially more individualistic than they are now because this only furthers the disconnection that people have with water and makes people complicit to the colonial and environmental degradation of water and undoes the work of alter life people cannot begin to understand and change the colonial privatization without of water without being able to theorize water something that's something that connects us all together without this we lead ourselves straight onto a very doomed path too busy focusing and tunnel visioning on the things right before us and our own immediate dangers to actually see the worldviews that affect us all i.e the, uh, the line three tar uh, tar sand pipelines that are being built right now that can threaten north america's fresh water supply chain by crossing through 200 bodies of water let that sink in that is that is all potentially a huge majority of north american fresh water that's being affected yet we all turn a blind eye to this and only focus on our most immediate things only the counter interpretation solve this by allowing a theory of ultra left not only incompatible with colonial conceptions of increased water, but also unbinds individualistic, individualistic chains that prevent us from seeing water from a worldview. This answer, their, their, their only answer to this really was the TVA stuff, but as long as we can prove that the TVA doesn't incorporate AF scholarship, we win this round. They say that the TVA solves all of our offense too, but no, the TVA doesn't address many issues, including including the very many historical analysis of different minority groups, including Asian people, and and the analysis of ultra life that is not at all incorporated within within the TVA because all it does is uh, re give back Turtle Island to indigenous people. This doesn't incorporate any of the one AC scholarship, which means that it's eventually always going to fail because uh, because of current conceptions about water resources and the government and onto the limits debate. Crossify the disads. They've dropped how limits are just a way of reproducing. Uh, uh, our disads, especially the respectability politics disads, because they saying that one that, 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 that limiting the topic just to increase water resources in order to be respectful only re reproduces violent mantras of anti in indigenous and Asian and black descent. And then only having the TV as an answer to limits is a huge mistake because ultra life turns this weak critique of their understanding of what cannot be considered topical because it was built upon stellar forces and they say ground. And the only answer to this was they didn't give a uh, they, they did not give a counter groundless as to what we prevent them from having, which means that you're always going to prefer us. We give counter performance indicts of ultra life defense of the status quo counter counterpoints with our competitive methods. Case of maturity, pessimism, etc. And they haven't given a groundless, which means that you're going to prefer us because we're the only internal link into stable and to stable net ground. And they say education and portable limits, uh, portable fields, but this isn't unique to them. We also allow for a kind of policy uh, style debate, but only thing is that we add is that we add our own type of scholarship as well onto the academy K. And also that means you can um, vote for the counter, -interpret counter interpretation as a net benefit. 
First, I'm going for the whitewashing this out in a world where we cannot talk about these kind of issues. What would the academy u be used for? They talk about how it's not just like a binary between uh, whether or not we're going to use the academy or not, but ultimately they still try to uh, get rid of the 1AC and its scholarship from the academy, which means that they still leak because we would go into a color neutral form of debate and practice where we can justify increased surveillance on indigenous water sites as a method of increasing water protections. You can you will whitewash the academy by forcing us to not have these conversations. This is extremely violent for two reasons. Number one, the continuation of colonial paradigms, the ways of thought. Number two, the types of protocols spill over and affect how indigenous people are socialized and result without acknowledging the importance of indigenous voice, scapegoating, otherization, and disempowerment are all inevitable. And I'm going for perm do both. Moten, the Moten evidence they talk about is a justification for the permutation because Moten also is a supporter of the 1AC. You can go back and look at the 1AC and check this. We are in a reinvestment in the academy. There's no reason why the undercommon and ultra life can coexist. Endorsing uh, the 1AC, uh, the 1AC as a question of whether we should include the strategy as a beneficial tool that uh, as a toolkit for anti-racist politics is a net benefit. And answer to the Ferguson link, no link. We are in a protest in the academy. The only thing that we do even related to the academy is reading the Afghan debate. But again, they double, they, they, they link that back that onto themselves, which means that they are painting pictures of just for trying to get a link and they say sabotage but literally everything that can get everything can get sabotaged at any time anywhere to anything which means that if we always focus on we'll never get things done and they say the identity link but no we aren't a binary between academy or not academy this is a this scholarship is important and they have dropped our all fails no analysis or other comments doesn't get co-opted or exists in current space it means that you'd be highly skeptical of any broad claims awesome great job um I have two and a half minutes um, starting now. Okay, so I'm gonna go the K the framework. Yeah, K and then framework. Um, just so you know, I will probably at some point like address your case argument, but it will be in context of like the framework flow. Plus, you float on framework, right? Um, Am I really quiet right now? Yeah, you are. <laughs> I, my computer does that sometimes. Give me a second. 
Is this better? Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, there you go. All right. Yeah. Um, so on framework, right? The case and cross cross application. Yeah, it will it'll more so be like a very short like sentence, um, but not anything that's like crazy. Okay, yeah. I'm yeah, good. if that helps. <laughs> okay. I was about to mute myself, like, no, I'm giving a speech. No, it's not what you do. Okay. I'm not going for the cape. I'm going to extend the identity link in the Ferguson evidence. Our argument is that the academy gives us a false choice where we either engage or refuse to engage. This is a choice that the affirmative is stuck in with structural, when it comes to the conversation of structuralisms and binaries that ca it causes either us, either removal of the other from the academic space or a consumption of the other suffering and struggle, which means it's impossible to formulate actual modes of resistance within the academic space. This means the AF can, not only can the AF not solve, but also the only thing the AF can do is attempt to engage in a form of communication conversation that provides some form of education, which we can then take outside of the academy and apply to our, our own individual lives. This bolsters our framework interpretation, which is why it's, this bolsters our framework interpretation and also our analysis of how the debate space is a competitive space, which means that we can't ever allow for, or we can't ever actually have the process of decolonization existing because teams are always focused on how can I win, but rather having a stable stasis point allows for us to gain the most education, both on the side of the affirmative and the side of the negative to understand how structural issues operate and then do what Moten and Hardy want us to do of taking that knowledge outside of the space rather than reproducing it within the space, showing our entire hand, showing the idea of the revolution that we want to engage in. We'd rather take it outside and allow for us to have conversations within our communities to then create the change that the affirmative is wanting to see. This solves that, this answers like also their whitewashing just said, we're not saying that we can never have conversations about ways that structural isms operate. Yes, that stuff is important, but rather when we come legible to the state by telling how revolutionary are telling the ways that we will act in resistant modes, which means that we are in modes of resistance. The co-option will always be inevitable. Teams will always race to the margins to attempt to beat your affirmative. So the only thing we can do is allow for us to have the most education, which is why you can now go to the framework. So the framing for this debate, again, should be about which team provides the best format for policy education. You can cross apply our interpretation that the app must defend some form of USFG policy implementation, of USFG policy, policy implementation. This is necessary because of the climate of the competitive space, which was conceded by the one and yard that the debate space is always competitive. Teams will always race to the margin. Teams will always attempt to beat the affirmative rather than get engaging about the critical conversation that their app attempts to presuppose. Their affirmative does not only rely on an action that the individuals do, but something it relies on a greater action of the ability to decolonize, to decolonize people's minds. The affirmative can never do that when they don't tie themselves to a policy topical plan because the negative is so focused on losing grounds and losing limits that they can never actually engage with the affirmative. They say ultra life is sad, but you again, you can cross apply the TVA. They say the TVA doesn't answer this argument, but our TVA of Give Turtle Island back to the um back to the uh, back to the indigenous allows for us to still have the critical conversations. They say we don't allow for the evidence of the 1AC, but yes, that comes a question as how to the affirmative structures their debate, but then tying structures their 1AC, but then tying that to the radical solution or to the solution solution of demanding some type of USFG policy, such as giving the land back to the indigenous to the indigenous communities that they're centered around. You can still have conversations as to how out afterlife allows us to orient ourselves to a practice or conversation of water, have conversations as to the fluidity of water, have conversations to the interconnectedness connectedness between different structural isms and the ways that other identities are positioned within settler colonialism, but tying it to the policy of giving land back is an example as to how the USFG then becomes implemented within the strategy of the affirmative we did make the analysis of how this is better for Browns when we said that without this, the negative loses the ability to talk about DA, such as the econ DA, or DA, such as the econ DA, such as international relations, such as counterplan. So yes, there is lost ground, but allowing for us to have those conversations then allows for us to have the intricate allows for us to understand the internal links between settler colonialism and other ways that policies formulate. It doesn't expose the entirety of our hand, but rather allows for us to then understand better how these structures operate on an individual level. We can then use those to create portable skills. So that also answers their limits argument. They say that there's a dissent on the limits. It's attempt to re it's, it's, it's another form of settler colonialism. But again, you can cross apply the TVA version here and the framing from the Ferguson evidence. It's not about just restricting the affirmative or being settler colonialist, but rather 
together. It's about what's the best way for us to engage in the radical education of the affirmative and tying that to policy action is better because the negative then has a platform to engage on that doesn't mute the entirety of the one and see creating portable skills, which is the disad to the affirmative. You can also cross apply the uniqueness TA that we that went on that went unanswered that right now there's a specific climate where we're talking about water policy, but without having the conversation, it means we'll never be able to address the real world problems that are happening. This also is bolstered by the Ferguson evidence because nothing happened outside of this debate round. All that matters is what skills and education do we gain from this debate that we can then apply to others. They say that um, they say we don't give a counter ground for grounds that we are lost. Again, you can cross apply that from the overview. They say they still allow for policy style, but our example is that the app becomes focused on these structures. That was the analysis between settler colonialism, anti-blackness. We never focus on the individual policies, but rather what best articulates positionalities, which is why our interpretation solves first. All right. Um... 109 left of prep. Let me just set that up. And then I'll start now. All right, that's time. The order is case, then framework. Um, real quick, did my voice get quieter? Okay, cool. Case then framework. This round is over. The net dropping the Thurston pack means we win this round. This is a conceded offense on on case that can be cross on the framework, which means we win because current discussions of water resources and protections ignores how number one, the federal eco research reserve requires certain populations to be damaged, even them as less valuable or less human than the ideal white subject recreating property humanism. And number two is that varied and various entanglement interconnections between people, community structures, and the environment that recognizes the violence on water is violent on indigenous tribes that are spiritually and materially dependent on it. And number three, that this is also cross on the framework, them continuously dropping this and just a small pivot on it in the 2NR is not enough. They use framework as a way to continue thirst for minority groups. Very similar to how Chinese railroad workers all were able to have the thirst quench when they serve the purpose of manifest destiny. There no analysis on the Chinese workers in the 1AC or no analysis on the thirst impact at all means that this is basically completely conceded. Framework mirrors is by allowing forms of minority scholarship when it serves the purpose of painting the state in a good light and only when it serves that purpose, which means that framework is really just a tool of the state 
to kind of continuously uh, recreate thirst for different minority groups every single time they try to, or every time they try to, um, every time they try to, I guess, inc incorporate their scholarship. And so they mirror this thirst and on uh, framework uh, onto the framework. I'm going for the altar life, just that status quo conceptions of water are already incredibly individualized and privatized, and they only make this worse through their counter interpretation because not only does it further the, the, the disconnection people have with water and the privatization of water, but it makes people complicit to colonial environmental degradation and undoes the work of ultra life. People cannot begin to understand the colonial privatization without being able to you know, theorize water something that connects us all together. Without this, we lead ourselves onto a doom path, too busy tunnel visioning onto our most immediate dangers and just the things around us and to be able to see the big picture and the world view of water, such as how the line three tar, tar, tar sand pipelines are being built right now that thread 200 bodies of water in the uh, in the, in, the you know, in, in North America. And only counter interpretation solves is because we allow a theory of ultra life that's not only incompatible with colonial conceptions of increased water, Water, which is, by the way, that is an answer to the TVA, but I'll get more into that later, but also unbinds the individualistic, uh, individualistic chains that prevent us from seeing water from a worldview onto uh, specifically the TVA cross apply the, the part where it's saying that ultra life is incompatible with colonial conceptions of increased water. This is because ultra life is a prerequisite before any um any, any state-based uh, policies towards um towards water protection. This is this is because uh, giving back Turtle Island does not kind of uh, look back and historicalize and then analyze all of the historical co co colonialism that has occurred on minorities within this country and how they all kind of intersect and interrelate with colonialism. All it does is just pretend like, okay, well, we kind of screwed up in the past. Let's just give them Turtle Island and pretend everything is fine. Obviously, it's, obviously, this does not solve. There's still many different balances that occur within the status quo that they are not addressing. They're trying to pass it up through one policy plan, which means that they do not address ultra life whatsoever. And it's just complete, uh, just a complete other form of kind of uh, just like, um, white people trying to pass off reforms as a way to try to help people when it really does not do anything. They say using debate as a competitive space is bad, but ultra life, uh, <coughs> ultra life answers this cross apply this because competition, competition is good. You can also, you can also uh, cross apply the ballot, the ballot stuff on case. I was also conceded ballots are good because it's the only way to actually change the debate community. How can we, how can we expect to change the debate community when every single time someone uh, brings up radical or like ra or quote unquote radical or critical arguments, they're just passed off as too, they're just passed off as like, um, they're, they're just passed off as framework as not good enough, which means that ballots are the only way to actually change this community and cross and also cross apply the ultra life where competition is good because competition is the only way for to actually teach us how to kind of materialize and actually defend these arguments in real life. If we never actually have to debate these arguments or we don't get any training for real life advocacy skills for these things that they say ground and limit is really their only offense that's actually left, but cross apply the ultra life to sets and the respectability politics to that limits are just ways of reproducing respectability politics to says this the respectability politics is that was only cross on limits, but they didn't address it at all, which means that this is conceded saying that one must limit the topic to just governmental increase of water resources in order to be seen as respectful only reproduces violent mantras of indigenous anti-indigenous Asian and black descent. The only thing they answered was the ultra life term, but there's no answer to the respectability politics this means that we have a clear offense that is conceded on the limits, which means that there's no way you, they, you can vote on that. Onto ground. We have continuously given the net ground throughout this round, counter performances, indice of ultra life, defenses of the status quo, counterplans based on competitive methods, case of maturity, pessimism, etc. Throughout the debates, the only time they have actually given specific ground that we lose is in the 2 and R, which is way too late in the debate, which means that our shift in argument choice understands the significance, educational significance of debate, which means that you should be willing to risk a small loss in ground in favor of more educational ground. And the groundless way too late in the debate means that we're the only team that has actually has um, an internal link in the limits and clash. And the only way they can really win now is through education portal skills, but I'll get into that right now. These impacts are not unique to them. We solve all of these things and solve all of their offense as well because we still critically allow for the education and portable skills that they provide since we don't borrow off topical debates. We just add the scholarship into the round, which means that you can vote for the counter interpretation because um, the critical analysis and like um, scholarship that we gain is just a net benefit to every all of their offense about educational portable skills because there's no reason why we don't include that too. All right, good debate. That was great. You did an awesome job defending your app. I love Thank it. Thank you. The first time around and like, I know we ended up going for framework, but well, we as I have a partner, but I know I did framework, but like, that's going to be what you probably hit the most. Yeah. Um, and you did awesome, like incorporating your affirmative throughout the entire like arguments that you had on framework in your analysis um, yeah. for it so i thought you were gonna go for the academy k for the two and r so i said all of two and r prep prepping the academy k <laughs> yeah the no um i felt like i'm gonna be honest i don't really read the academy k often so i was like okay you know k's can vary like you could get a cap k you could get the academy k um and you might get anti-blackness here or there but i know you're gonna get framework so i was like what's a way to like kind of spin it a little bit 
um, which is something that, especially because like one, it's like clear, like you're a really good debater. So you're going to be like making it into out rounds. You're going to be making it into finals. Like you're going to be making it really, I don't know how last year was. Um, Not too good, but we don't talk about that. What? Not too good, but we don't have to talk about that. Well, based on where I'm seeing you now, like the growth, especially over this camp, like you're going to be making it farther in tournaments. You're going to be having like some intense competition and teams are going to try to do like that sneaky stuff that they haven't really, they're going to be better at it. That teams haven't really been better at before. Well, they'll read a K only for the purpose of getting you to debate it. So then Mm -hmm. go for just the framing of it to like help with their framework argument. Um, or teams may do the ontology debate simply just so they can use it for framework, which I'm sure you've experienced before. So the only thing that I would say is to, like when you're on the framework flow and you're making your altered life answers, explicitly like name drop the Ferguson evidence and be like, they attempt to give this analysis of how the like our affirmative will become commodified by the debate space and answered like that commodification, like framing a little bit more um, head on that says, you know, like nothing, basically there's nothing that we'll ever solve. Um, There's nothing that's gonna come out of debate. And your competition argument and your argument about like training ground is a perfect answer for that, but you want to apply it to the ways that we explain like debate kind of as a neoliberal structure. and why, like, especially like the race to the margins where it's like, that means teams are then going to just read your like literature just to like win. So apply those arguments of like, hey, even if teams like co-op this, edu- like this knowledge and this production, one, the uniqueness of the AF is that like we already exist in a state of co-option. So that's not unique, that's not inevitable. And two, you can make like a, a white centering disab of that ideology centers the ways that white people respond to the affirmative rather than centering the ways that indigenous dreams are created or indigenous um, like interconnectedness is related. Mm -hmm. So even if there are negative impacts to the AF, it's about what does the like minority gain, not just how whiteness like circumvent the conversation. And that was the way that I like would always answer the Academy K2. And I was like, what's your impact? And they'd be like, oh, well, it's like you said, sabotage is inevitable. That's great. Like commodification, it's inevitable. That's great. Like there's no way for us to gather. Um, Even if you look at the Ferguson movement, for example, there was, which could be an example that you use against like an Academy K, there were moments where the new Black Panther Party really attempted to organize, but they did it by using like social media because they had to find a way to communicate with each other, you know, as they're like all in different areas and locations in the city. So if everyone needed to meet somewhere to like protest or to help someone, then they would use social media and like direct messages, DMs, text messages, something that you would think is like private. Or, you know, that equivalent of like, oh, you know, you're having a cookout, right? It seems as though those conversations are private. Yet, when the state views that it's threatened, it's allowed to, like, view messages. It's allowed to, like, stand outside or surveil homes, right? It's allowed to have, like, mics, even if they're not inside your house, they can still like surveil all of the outside property. Um, If your windows are open, they're allowed to have cameras or drones like look into your windows. So even when it seems private, co-option and sabotage is inevitable because the state will always put in all of its resources to do that. So the undercommons actually doesn't even exist. We just like to think of it as a place that exists to like soothe our consciousness and make us like feel as though there's moments where we can be safe when in reality, like, we never are. Give me a sec, I'm writing that down. Okay, yeah, got that. 
So then the last phrase I would use is the Academy K, any dis out of commodification, any dis, of, dis out of sabotage becomes the uniqueness framing for why the affirmative has to happen. Mm, okay. Because since those impacts are inevitable, the only thing we can do is like radically affirm subjectivity in a world where your subjectivity is not supposed to exist. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> and then it like mutes the entirety of the Academy K. So you're not really worried about like, you still put the disads on there, but it's also like, okay, like there's no impacts. So if you lose the perm, that's fine. There's no impacts or you win the perm, you know, cause there's literally no impacts. It's kind of like who gives a crap about this, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Um, I had a bit of a question about the cross applications. I was trying to like continuously, I guess, reincorporate the one I see, but do you think I did a good job at that? And like, how can I like specifically improve a bit? No, yeah, I think you did a great job of the cross application, Um, especially when on framework, you're talking about like the interconnectedness and how like certain, like even if it's, um like give Turtle Island back, like it's still not focused on, you know, like the unique framings of your app. I thought that analysis is good. Um, the only thing in terms of this is something more so for you and Luke to talk about, because yeah. I know we mentioned it during our meeting a little bit, was if you're framing the aft in terms of thirst or if you're framing the aft as something else. Um, right, yeah. So I met with Greg the next day afterwards and kind of what we, what we kind of came to was basically, it was like really building off like the manifest destiny stuff and like the stuff we talked about before, but it was like how, let's like, I don't know, talk about like the Chinese railroad um, workers again, right? Mm -hmm. How they, their only way kind of to live was to continue building the railroads west because that was like their purpose to the state, right? They were like, they were kind of just seen as laborers, right? And so, if they didn't do their job, they wouldn't get meals, right? So like the only way to kind of quench their thirst was to kind of continue. Oh, I think you like Oh no. Out. Yeah, I was gonna say, last word I heard was they wouldn't yeah. get meals. Right, so they wouldn't get any meals. So the only way to really, like if they didn't do their job, they wouldn't get meals, right? So mm -hmm. the only way to really like quench their thirst was to continue building the railroad railroads west in order to, I guess like, fulfilled like the project of manifest destiny right so mm -hmm. there was kind of a relationship between how thirst operated for chinese americans and the colonial expansion of the state which mm -hmm. i think i can make a connection from there especially like specifically onto how settler colonialism continued further westward and like continued like you know taking over indigenous lands yeah that makes total sense to me um mm -hmm. so then i didn't really need to like go back and look at your 1ac but then do you have like thirst incorporated into the tags or the conversation of the 1AC? I'll be honest, there's a lot of things I did yesterday. So it's all kind of blowing together, but I can go check right now. Also, I think you no. lagged out again. Yeah. I was gonna we'll say I don't know why it's, I just heard I'll be honest. So hopefully okay. don't to okay. explain. Yeah. <laughs> it was like um, I'll be honest, I did a lot of like writing blocks yesterday. So like I don't even remember what was incorporated, but I think in the 1AC Murphy tag, there should be something about the first. Which it's yeah, okay if it, it doesn't, but. It, it is. It, I say, um, settlers enforced a commodifying regime that framed water as a resource whose distribution was indexed to an ideal of white property humanism. Chinese railroad workers were only deemed worthy of quenching their thirst when they labored to physically extend the American dream of manifest destiny to the West. As a result, settler governance over water was expanded to continue colonial practices such as damming, polluting, and enclosing waterways, rivers, and lakes that were of spiritual and material significance to native tribes. Like okay. Part of it, yeah. that, that makes sense. Um, and then maybe possibly like adding after when you say like the expansion of manifest destiny, right? Yeah. As it, as it, as that expansion is happening, it's also taking away or it's also creating the problem of indigenous thirst on the other side. Um, right. because now you're taking yeah. away waterways, right? So yeah. maybe anywhere in the tag, like adding that corporation to which simultaneously like increased or tied, mm -hmm. like forever tied, um, like 
Asian American thirst to indigenous thirst. Um, right, let me add that right now, actually. And then that would give all the coherency. Again, I didn't read that card, so it makes sense why it was extrapolated a lot. But then it gives you that full, like, that's the argument of the 1AC when we're talking about the interconnectedness between, like, water and thirst and settler colonialism. It just makes it, like, totally yeah. explicit and apparent. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than that, like, this is great. I loved it. You rocked your aff. Um Thanks. You framed it really well. You carried it across the debate. So that was really good too. Um, if you want to, you can always cross apply like the Shanera evidence to the K framing too as another answer when you're like commodities inevitable. So that's why we have to apply like the Shanera or like the Reed Brinkley evidence. The re okay, um, okay. Sorry, yeah, that's, no worries, I'm calling her by, yeah, her name. Yeah, yeah no Dr. Shanera Reed Brinkley. Um, but just cross applying it like cross applying that to the K um, when you answer, like it's all like the commodification is inevitable. So the only thing that matters is like, how do we face that commodification? And Brinkley would argue it's still important to like insert your subjectivity, even if like the status quo is how the status quo is. Yeah, got that. Yeah, uh, that was great though. So thank you for, I feel honored. Thank you, you. thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, that was really helpful. And I have another debate at once. So I should probably start prepping that. I was going to say, I have to judge at once. So yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, All right good luck. So I'll see you Bye. later. Bye.